The ceremony that you are about to witness is an Army wreath laying ceremony to be conducted by the General Federation of Women's Clubs. It is requested that everyone remain silent and standing during this ceremony. All military personnel in uniform will render the hand salute, and it is appropriate for all others to place their right hand over their heart upon the command of present arms. Thank you.
the organization stands for and what it does. And I can think back through the years I've been with the memorial, which is now, this is my 29th year that I've been president. Some people you can't get rid of. <laughs> uh, and I think about that and I think of all of the people, all the organizations, and I can think of so many of your presidents that I have known and met with through the years. And uh, I think that one your president, Faye, uh, yes, was, I think she was a ribbon cutter at the dedication. I can't swear to that, but I'm pretty sure she was. I see some other people nodding their heads, so I think she was. So if had been around then, she could have been the one cutting the ribbon. But uh, maybe we'll find another ribbon to cut. <laughs> so I thank you again for coming and for taking time to view the exhibits. And I am impressed with the fact that so many of you walked down from there. <laughs> And um, we're GFWC sisters with the sisters in the military. And so we have brought you a few of our t-shirts that say GFWC sisters. So there are several here and I believe we'll let you choose which sizes you would like. But if you would like to hold one up for a, a photo up for Peter to, to take a picture, he's right over here. <laughs> so, anyway, we are proud to be here, so, okay. You know, as we stand here, one thing I neglected to mention you, which I should have, you may wonder where all of this is behind me, and I should have come, come here, do that for us, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, this fall, we had a, a captain in the Navy Reserve, who decided that she was going to run 100 uh, miles and raise money for this and another organization in tribute to the women who lost their lives in Iran and Afghanistan, which totaled some 160 at that point. And so we decided that, you know, she ran so many miles every day for five days, I think it was, and then she ended up coming in here, as a matter of fact, on the 18th of, uh, of October, which was our 18th anniversary. So that's when she finished. And so there were at least 160 people who joined in there. And we gave each one of them one of these ribbons with a picture of one of those 160 women. And then they came in and they put them here and this is the first time we've ever had a display on this marble that's here. And this marble is the sister block to the marble that was used in the Tomb of the Unknown. So in a sense, it's a very historic piece of marble. But then as you look at this, you're looking at the pictures of 160 of our women who gave their lives for our country during the Iraq and Afghanistan war. Hence the GFWC sister shirts to go along with them. So That's thank right. you so much. It's my honor to stand before you today representing the General Federation of Women's Clubs. And I know that all of us are proud to be paying tribute to all of the women who have served, are currently serving, and will serve our country in some branch of our military. While the 125 years of recorded history of GFWC is vast, and detailed on many subjects, I often think about and wonder what it would look like if we had pictures and displays like this museum has so elegant, eloquently created that would show the support GFWC has given our women and men in, in uniform over the years. I would imagine that the support of GFWC clubs and clubwomen that we have given to the war efforts to our soldiers and to our veterans could fill a room, perhaps several rooms. Yet like 
Many of the unsung heroes or heroines recognized in this memorial, there are no such photographs. There is no such recorded history because what we did was not done for glory or credit. We did it because we believe in our country. Without the Women in Military Service for America Memorial, without this incredible place, there would be no collection of the history of our women in military service. For that, and on behalf of GFWC, I would like to publicly thank retired Brigadier General Wilma Bach, and GFWC is proud to have been a part of these efforts right from the inception. Now, I happen to have a special connection as my mother, Barbara Peck, was president of the GFWC Maryland Federation during the 1996-98 administration, and she was inspired by these efforts, so much so that she chose to focus on veterans as her president's special project to align with GFWC's partnership with WIPSA. Now, we've all heard General Bott say many times that she did not make this happen herself. But I know for a fact that she was a driving force. She did not single-handedly build this physical structure from the ground up, but her vision grew out of a strong foundation. She did not personally gather all that you see in these hallowed halls, but she shaped that story for all to see. As Margaret Mead said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world indeed is the only thing that ever has. General, let me just say, you put a fantastic group together. You assembled a team of fabulous women who are dedicated to giving proper recognition and befitting tribute to these brave, selfless, dedicated women. GFWC is delighted to be a part of this team, and we are delighted to be a part of your team. Today, the Executive Committee of GFWC had the distinct honor and privilege of placing a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. And we thank you for joining us up there for that auspicious occasion. And now we find ourselves in the inevitable position of being assembled in this hall of honor with club women from around the country, surrounded by the staff and the flags of our great United States of America. And we want to take this moment to display our patriotism and that of our entire organization to show our unyielding respect for those women who have served and are serving at this time, and to offer at least some indication of our endless appreciation for the lives we have and the freedoms we enjoy that we know are anything but free. The wreath that my director of junior clubs will bring up here is a symbol of our unending support of our nation's service women and is given in recognition of their bravery, their sacrifices, and their lives. We thank you for allowing us to be here with you this afternoon. 